Hello, I'm Richard Arfston. I'm the sculptor who um, made this piece here. This is a witch doctor that uh, was given us a choice between peace or war. And uh, it was made from parts from an old car I had in Buick. That's the, that's the radio there. And we're approaching the zero hour when it, we could be going to war again. This is a uh, face of war. And it's made by using a match and burning styrofoam. And then uh, casting it in uh, sand. And it's, it's a solid aluminum piece. This, These three masks are made by uh, taking a burlap bag and painting them with wax and then uh, burning them out and casting. This head of Dr. Martin Luther King is made by a standard lost wax process where you model in clay and then you make a rubber mold and then you make a wax impression from the rubber mold. Put a, a shell on it, it's a ceramic shell or else a plaster shell. You melt out the wax and then you fill the cavity with molten metal. It's a very, very involved process. I, and I don't I don't use it very often. It's it's just I don't have the patience for it. It's not that I can't do it. I can but it, it's just way, way too much work. Uh, when you make mother molds, you usually uh, work with plaster. And you mix it in a plastic bucket by hand. And you can never get all of the plaster out. Anyways, when I would make mother molds, I was always amazed by uh, what was left in the pail. So then I started sculpting the stuff that was in the pail. Anyway, so this is one of those uh, sculptures. I call this Thoroughly Modern Millie. And it's uh, plaster that was left in the bottom of the pail. <laughs> uh, anyways, it was fun. I'm basically kind of lazy. So uh, this is a very, very fast way to work. So essentially what you're doing is taking some sand and the sand is kind of, well it's oily but it acts like snow that packs, okay? And you carve that sand and, uh, and then you remove the cavity, there's two, two pieces together and, and you carve one half of it. So anyways, uh, this is one of my very first attempts at, at carving sand. I don't know anybody else that carves sand, but uh, this is what I do. You'll see other pieces. Here, uh, this is another one. This is uh, much farther along in my evolution of carving sand. Uh, what I really like about it is it's so fast. Uh, I don't know any, why other people don't use this other than the fact that it's uh, very, very hard to do. You know. I'm basically a risk taker. You know, I always want to know what would happen if I did this? What will happen if I do that? So I experiment a lot and other people don't want to do that because you might just throw away all your effort, you know. Anyways, well, here's one, you know, was this is a miscast. It didn't turn out the way I wanted, but it, hey, it came out kind of cool. Uh, this is a little different. This one here is I made a clay face and I put a piece of saran wrap over it. And then I cast it. I'm experimenting with sheet metal. I was trying to make a face out of sheet metal, you know. How do you make the lips? How do you make the eyes? How do you make the nose? Well, this is a very early uh, experiment. And uh, uh, this is what I came out with, you know. It's, it's, 
I play a lot, you know, I mean, I, I want to have fun, I got to have fun. And here, uh, you know what these, uh, all these wig heads look like. Well, they're made out of styrofoam. I do a lot of styrofoam casting. And I thought, oh, maybe I could cast those heads into something interesting. So I saw those heads up and, and then I uh, put them back together and I made these android people with split personalities. You saw the Martin Luther King head before. That process is called lost wax. Well, in that process, uh, you have a wax head and you heat it and the wax runs out and makes a cavity and that's where you put the metal. So I was always, I was working in a foundry and I was always fascinated by uh, this uh, wax that when it ran out, it made these really interesting puddles. And uh, so anyway, so what can I do with that, you know? So I uh, started putting burlap in it and uh, moving it around and uh, that's where the series of um, burlap heads came from or masks. I uh, used to do a lot with uh, styrofoam and then I uh, started putting cloth and aluminum foil and toilet paper and other things, screws, whatever, into the styrofoam. And uh, so this is one of those pieces. Then they're cast in aluminum. It's my preferred metal. So I became fascinated with uh, making styrofoam heads. And I had a collection of them. And I thought, what can I do with them? So uh, anyways, I started building androids with them. This is a sphinx, a lady sphinx. If you study the real sphinx, you can see that uh, it was kind of like a lion that was uh, sitting down with a woman's face. Anyway, that's what the idea is for that one. Whenever I go to the museums, I always uh, try to see what the uh, primitive societies were making for masks. And I was always fascinated with them. So was Picasso. You think he invented all those faces? Hell, that was all done in Africa. Hundreds, thousands of years ago. Anyways, um, so these uh, faces are inspired by African masks. I love working with steel because it lays around everywhere. Just as you drive around the neighborhood on garbage day, people are throwing it away. So uh, I'm not proud. I stop, pick it up, put it in the car, take it home. So I got piles of good junk. And uh, anyways, uh, I like to weld good junk together. This is an ode to Harriet the Homemaker. She got two kids, Duncan Fight Furniture, Superwoman, look at those breasts. Trivets, she's got it all. There's a gladiator on one side and a, a king on the other. You know, you're only limited by your imagination. This is the penguin man meets uh, Admiral Perry. And the best part about it is, this is Homer Simpson here. This is fun, you know, and then you get to make a story. Uh, this is one of my little helpers. He's holding my beer and fishing pole. You know, um, I, I try and keep it fun. I, I, uh, I don't know, I'm a, probably a lousy businessman. You know, I, I don't want to make more than one of the same things. And these are, are pieces of steel and uh, family relations here. There's, this is two mother and father, and those were adopted kids. They'll never look uh, like their mother and father, you know.
This one here is a single mother raising two kids. You know? Give me a pile of junk. I can make something out of it. Tell you a story. It's, it's just fun. You know, it's what I do. I have a thing about kings and queens. You know? These are two snowmobile mufflers. I thought they were cool shapes. So I made them into a piece of sculpture. Here we have some more snowmobile mufflers. So I made them into a headless runner. In my everyday job, I, I paint barns and the paint comes in a 55 gallon drum, so I have hundreds of drums. So I use those drums uh, to make stuff. All these metal flowers are made out of drums. This guy is made out of drums, you know. So, uh, you can never, there's no I, uh, chance of running out of ideas. You just gotta have stuff to work with. Here are the University of Minnesota in Crookston asked me to make a golden eagle for them. So the first part there, you saw the styrofoam maquette. That's a little model of what I proposed to do. Here's the piece here. And this is me making it. So you can get some concept of how big a scale the thing is. You know, I don't know, it's fun. Nice part about being able to cast is you can work with different kinds of metal. This is uh, styrofoam here, and uh, it's cast in bronze. This one here is a bird, and uh, it's cast in aluminum and painted. You know, uh, paints marvelous, just absolutely marvelous. <laughs> People were throwing away uh, packaging from television sets and computers. I would pick that styrofoam up and saw it up and make things out of it. This is a science fiction penguin. Somebody wanted me to make an alligator for their for their garden pond, so I made an alligator for the garden pond out of some ductwork, industrial ductwork that I had that somebody was throwing away. I'm basically self-taught, but I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. I take a lot of night school classes at technical college, and instead of welding the little, they call them uh, the coupons, uh, and throwing them away, I would go get everybody else's out of the garbage and I'd weld them together and make something out of them. This is my blue dog bringing back the stick. Got all these barrels, so uh, I was making birds out of them. Trouble is, they're too hard to take to an art fair. I take up too much room in the truck. But anyways, I made a whole slug of them. And, uh, People that bought them, they really liked them. Just uh, couldn't get enough in a truck, you know. For a while, I was painting uh, construction auctions. And at the end of the auction, they always had a pile of steel that went for next to nothing. So I would throw it on a truck and drag it home. Use it to make something out of. This is the omnipotent duck empire. And duck and the duck tower. If you're interested in seeing more, there's more at sachiart.com forward slash Richard Arpston. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and a better tomorrow.